Uh, let's speak now to Roshanara Ali, the Labour MP for Bethnal Green and Bow and a member of the Treasury Select Committee. Um, just a quick thought, first of all, Roshanara, on the news that was announced a little earlier this evening of that agreement on the five-day easing of restrictions over Christmas. Do you think that is a sensible plan, given the risks that there will inevitably be of an increase in coronavirus infections? Well, look, I can appreciate that this year has been incredibly difficult for everyone, not being able to see loved ones. And of course, the Christmas holiday is such an important part of our lives, whichever faith people are from. So I can understand why this uh, announcement has been made. It's important and welcome that this is an agreement across the four nations. But we have to be vigilant. We have to make sure that people follow the rules uh, as set out. And I very much hope that the government did take the scientific advice seriously and base the decision uh, to make the, this come to this conclusion and make this announcement today this announcement today based on evidence because in the past what we've seen is the government saying it's guided by the science but then we've found that actually it's been shopping and changing and then scientists have come come along and said actually it would have been better to have for instance a circuit breaker back in september um, and the information and data wasn't published till much later when my party came in and said we really must when we found, found out that that was the advice that we should have a circuit breaker which would have been shorter than the lockdown we got ultimately. So okay. it's very important that we keep a close eye on it uh, and make sure that if the infection rates go up then obviously we need to calibrate again and in local areas like mine we'll have to be extra careful. Indeed and just one more on this because of course we're waiting to hear which parts of the country are going to be in which tiers um, and this is going to be continuing for weeks if not months once the national lockdown ends at the beginning of December. Um, what do you think will and should happen for London? There's been a lot of speculation as to whether it should be in tier two or three. Well, look, I think the important thing, as I said, is that the government follows the evidence and looks at infection rates and bases its decision on that basis. And and that, that lesson has to be learnt very um, strongly going forward. The second thing is the economic package and support that the Chancellor has provided in the past has involved quite a lot of chopping and changing. And businesses have had to play catch up with the government, uh, you know, changing things very, very rapidly uh, or at the last minute, as you saw, with the furlough scheme being ended on the day that it uh, was proposed to end and then got extended uh, on the 31st of October. So we, at this stage, I think the important thing is making sure that the tiered system is fit for purpose across the city, but also across the country, and that local mayors or city mayors don't have to have the battles that they've had to have with government for the economic support, because otherwise we're just going to be coming in and out of lockdown and potentially end up in a third wave if we don't get a grip on this virus. The final thing I'd say is about testing and tracing. It is still the case that the testing and tracing system is, uh, there's a lot to be desired for it, even though the government spent £12 billion on Serco and it's likely to go up to £20 billion. That is hard earned taxpayers' money and we were promised a world beating system that would have reduced the, the risk of closure and lockdown and so on. Uh, that's not what's happened. So the government okay. has to sort that out as well. Uh, what about the Chancellor's statement tomorrow? Uh, what do you think the priority should be? We are hearing that we're going to get an extra £4 billion to help people who've lost their jobs. That's presumably something that you'd welcome. Well, I would, I would welcome any effort to invest in jobs and training and support. But the fact is, we've already seen hundreds of thousands of people lose their jobs, some of them needlessly, because the government made last-minute decisions without factoring in that employers need to give people notice. And a lot of people needlessly lost this jo their jobs because the furloughing scheme was in, uh, uh, information wasn't given to people about that. Also, we're expecting to see, according to the Bank of England and the other analysis that has been done, unemployment rising to uh, about 7.7% now, uh, that is terrifying. So there are people who will be worrying about their jobs, uh, those who haven't lost their jobs, what happens, what's, you know, what's going to happen after the furloughing uh, scheme. One million young people face unemployment and the government's in uh, programs, one of the issues is that while the government ha is attaching billions of pounds to these programs, there's, there's a lot of chopping and changing. With youth unemployment, for instance, the government's got a six-month program 
that where you have to be unemployed for six months before you get on it, and then it's not clear what's going to happen afterwards. That's just one example. So I welcome any investment that can be provided to support people get back into work quickly and train people and so on. The question is, are those policies then fit for poor purpose, or is it just lots of pound signs and then it doesn't have an effect on people's lives and get people back to work? That's what's happening at the moment. We're hearing the idea that there's going to be a public sector pay cap, that the planned rise in the national living wage is not going to happen after all. Um, are those measures which you think that the Labour Party should oppose? I believe that what we've seen with public sector workers is they have been at the front line uh, alongside NHS workers, other public sector teachers, care workers. These are people who've risked their lives to protect us. The government clapped, uh, encouraged people to clap NHS workers and public sectors, and their answer is now not to pay, uh, you know, to have a pay freeze for, for them when they've suffered 10 years of austerity and a pay freeze. And also private sector workers at the bottom end of the, the labour market are going to be affected. Those are the people, again, who are the lowest earners, who've been on the front line. They've taken a hit in terms of income, but also in terms of risk to their lives. And the answer, the, the government's answer is to, to make them worse off while we are still in the middle of the pandemic, in the second wave, which, frankly, the government could have done a lot more for us to avoid. So I think it's deeply unfair. The government has talked to uh, 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 the big talk about levelling up. In fact, its actions are showing that it's back to the same old Tories. And the other thing is, in the meantime, they've wasted billions of pounds of public money on testing and tracing that hasn't worked. We need testing and tracing to work so that money is properly used to protect people. But also, well, they have wasted money on procurement by taking advantage of emergency legislation to dish out contracts to companies that haven't been able to, haven't delivered. And some of them are actually, some of this is uh, the misuse of public money. Now, people are going to look at that, and we've seen court, you know, court cases now. Um, the NAO found that, that uh, billions of pounds have been misused or wasted. Now, what we are seeing is misallocation of funding, misuse of public money in, in many of these cases. And while our constituents are expected uh, to be facing wage freezes, whether in the public sector or, or private sector because of national minimum wage. And the nonetheless... Poverty. Nonetheless, you would surely, though, think that the Chancellor has done the right thing with the furlough scheme, which has been extended, costing billions of pounds uh, every month, and that is going to continue right through to the spring. And that, along with many of the other schemes that he's announced, has done an enormous amount to keep people in employment. Well, look, there's no quarrel about the fact that we needed the furlough scheme. We campaigned for it, trade unions campaigned for it, and we, we, we then got it. The problem is that there isn't a proper strategy or exit plan, even though we have, the government should have learned from what happened in the first wave. Uh, so this chopping and changing, indecision, and then c c saying they're going to follow the science, but then not doing so, all these mixed messages are making it very difficult for businesses to operate. Uh, and this is not something that I, as a Labour MP alone, uh, are saying, or other MPs on my side are saying. This is a frustration that people across the Parliament are feeling and uh, across the country are feeling. That, you know, this government has been really, really horrifically incompetent. Uh, people can forgive any government at the beginning of a major crisis in feeling its way and finding its feet. Uh, and there was a great deal of cross-party working and consensus right at the beginning. That has collapsed because this government is not acting in good faith. It is uh, not listening. Uh, so I hope that, you know, it, as we go forward, the government will take into account uh, these concerns, particularly around okay. the misuse of public money. OK, Rashanara Ali, Labour MP for Bethnal Green and Bow and a member of the Treasury Select Committee. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here on Times Radio.